With 2020 on the horizon, there are a plethora of brand new Japanese RPGs also coming. And in today's video, I want to highlight 10 of the best upcoming JRPGs in early 2020. So we're only looking at games that are coming in the early portion of the year. So bear that in mind. I'm sure towards the latter portion of the year, there will be a lot of other JRPGs coming as well. And a lot more games will be announced. So with that being said, let's get right into this. And let's start off with what is without a doubt the biggest JRPG of 2020 and probably one of the biggest game releases of the year and that is the Final Fantasy 7 Remake. I should probably say Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 1 but I'll leave you guys to decipher that. Whatever the case may be, Final Fantasy 7 is one of the most iconic games of all time and to see it finally be remade it's kind of surreal that we're only 3 months away, less than 3 months at this point until the release of this remake. If you guys don't know, there's a long history with the FF7 Remake. Going back to E3 of 2005 I believe is when we saw that tech demo on the PlayStation 3 and that immediately got the wheels turning for a lot of people in our heads thinking holy crap a remake of Final Fantasy 7 from the ground up for modern platforms would be fantastic. But years went by, we never heard anything. We got Final Fantasy 13, we got Final Fantasy 15, we got FF14 and a bunch of expansions, we got a bunch of other games, we got Crisis Core, we got so much stuff, but never did we get a remake until now. It was announced 10 years after that initial demo at E3 of 2015 that Final Fantasy 7 would be getting a remake and it would be released on the PlayStation 4. And now, all these years later, come March 3rd, we will finally have Final Fantasy. Fantasy 7 remake in our hands at least the first portion of it ultimately this does look to be a multi-part game and that's a little bit of a bummer however if they're really trying to flesh out every area of the game and trying to make it as robust of an experience as possible I understand why they're doing this because Final Fantasy 7 was an enormous game that was streamlined a little bit for the PlayStation 1 but now with the PlayStation 4 there's a lot of opportunity to flesh out a lot of pieces of content I imagine that Vincent and Yuffie are going to be mandatory characters instead of optional characters and if you want to delve into their backstory, you can do a lot of other stuff as well. I've thrown out the idea of incorporating the entirety of Crisis Core into the remake as well. I don't know how likely that is, but there's a lot of potential and different things to do with the Final Fantasy VII remake, and I'm incredibly excited for it, and it's dropping March 3rd. Next up, another major JRPG coming in 2020, that is Persona 5 Royal, that'll be out March 31st, and it is of course a extension of Persona 5, however, don't think of this as just a re-release that's not adding a lot. If you guys are unfamiliar with Persona's re-releases, they are always substantial, go into Persona 3 FES and then Persona 4 Golden, they add a substantial amount of content, and with Persona 5 Royal, it's once again going to be adding quite a bit of content. We're talking, you know, 30 to 40 hours of gameplay play new characters new things to do yes would it be great if for owners of persona 5 it would be some sort of dlc extension yeah that would be awesome however in this case it is going to be a full 60 dollar purchase and it's going to be worth 60 dollars if you played persona 5 you know how incredible that game was and i think persona 5 is one of those games where people are going to be okay with spending 60 dollars again just because of the excellence of the game and to just get more persona 5 with all of the dlc content hey that's going to be right up my alley and i'm incredibly excited for it. Moving on from that, Square Enix will be bringing out Trials of Mana on April 24th, and Trials of Mana is a modern revival of the third game in the seminal Mana series. The game originally released in Japan as second in Densetsu 3 has been fully rebuilt from the ground up in 3D. Experience the beloved adventure fully modernized with quality graphics, an upgraded battle system, character voices, a remastered soundtrack, extra conversation, interludes, and more. The overlapping story of interwoven destinies changes depending on who you choose as your main character and companions. It's a very charming JRPG. It is priced pretty hefty at $49.99, so nearly a full price game. However, given the effort they're putting into this remake, I can kind of understand that price point. Whatever the case may be, it'll be out on April 24th. Next up, we have another pretty major JRPG. This one a little bit different in stylization. It is Neo 2. That'll be out March 13th. This is obviously a follow-up to Neo, which took the gaming world by storm back in 2017. It was a great game that often saw some comparisons to the Souls titles. And yes, it was an incredibly challenging and rewarding action-oriented title, and from that standpoint, it is similar to Souls. However, it definitely has its own unique elements. The gameplay is quite a bit different. Of course, the presentation, the setting, all of those elements are different. It has a story that's more in your face. And with Neo 2, you will once again master the lethal arts of the samurai as a mysterious half-human, half-supernatural yokai warrior in a challenging action RPG sequel. Explore violence in Goku-era Japan and the deadly dark realm, both plagued with grotesque 
merciless demons, unsheath your deadly weapons, and cut down all enemies in your path using a revamped combat system and the ability to transform into a full yokai to unleash devastating paranormal powers. Neo 2 will be out March 13th. Next up, we have Ark of Alchemist, which will be coming January 30th. Beyond the endless desert dunes, it is rumored that there is a key to save humanity. Will you be the savior of mankind, or is salvation just a mirage? The desert-filled RPG world of Ark of Alchemist will now be arriving as a digital exclusive in North America this winter. It'll be available on the PlayStation 4, and it features seamless battles at a moment's notice. Players will find themselves solving mechanical puzzles and facing giant mechanical monsters. Every grain of sand you step on can either lead players to a new path or casualties, so watch your step every which way. Ark of Alchemist will be due out on January 30th. Next up, we have Yakuza 5, which is coming February 11th. Of course, Yakuza is a game that isn't similar to the other JRPGs on this list. However, it does have some RPG elements, and Yakuza is such an established franchise at this point that I thought it deserved some recognition. And Yakuza 5 will be following a similar style in all of the other games. You don't need to fix what isn't broken. However, with Yakuza 7, they are obviously trying something really, really new. So maybe that notion doesn't hold up as well. Whatever the case may be, Yakuza 5, expect that to be a really good game. However, go into Yakuza 5, while playing the other titles. Yakuza 2 is available, Yakuza Kiwami, Kiwami 2. You've got Yakuza 3 and 4 already out, and then Yakuza 5 will be rounding out that collection. And of course, if you do want to buy the collection in the form physically, you can get Yakuza 3, 4, and 5 in physical form. February 11th, it'll be dropping as a collection as well. So you've got a couple of options, and of course, every Yakuza game is high quality, and February 11th, you're going to be getting another one with Yakuza 5. Next up, we have Snack World, the Dungeon Crawl Gold. That'll be coming February 14th. And the Snack World is Level 5's fifth multimedia franchise following a lot of the other stuff they did, like Professor Layton, Yokai Watch. And the franchise itself is a hyper casual fantasy that is set in Snack World, the traditional fantasy world combined with convenient stories, smartphones, and other elements of the modern world. It revolves around the adventure of Chup, a wandering hero with a strong sense of justice who is determined to get revenge against large scale leisure facilities after it destroyed his village in response to villagers refusing to allow eviction of the village by the former. It's a charming JRPG, and it'll be out February 14th. Next up, we have Kingdom Hearts 3's major DLC expansion in Remind. That'll be out January 23rd. I usually wouldn't mention a DLC in a list like this. However, Remind is a major piece of DLC. Initially, going into the announcement of this, I figured it would be a $10 to $15 extension, but it is a $30 expansion. So you can expect a sizable amount of content, and determined to rescue Kairi, Sora travels to the Keyblade Graveyard a short time before the final battle was to take place, lacking a corporal form, he traces the hearts of the seven guardians of light through experiencing their personal battles firsthand. Sora is about to discover truths that he has never before imagined. New Keyblades will be available, additional secret bosses, and players will have the ability to switch characters in certain scenarios. So it's adding quite a bit, and Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind will be out January 23rd. Next up, we have a Wii U game making its way to the Nintendo Switch. Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE Encore will be out January 17th. Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE is an RPG and a crossover between the Shin Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem series. Set in modern day Tokyo, the game follows the members of a talent agency during their conflicts with hostile beings from another world called Mirages. To help them, the main cast are allied with friendly Mirages inspired by characters from multiple Fire Emblem games. The game story is split up into several chapters, with the player also being able to participate inside stories for various playable and supporting characters, as well as take quests from various NPCs all over Tokyo. The game alternates between real world Tokyo and the Idolosphere's alternate dimension where enemy Mirage is wrong. Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE wasn't received to be the best JRPG in the world, but still excited to see it make its way over to the Nintendo Switch. It'll be out January 17th. And lastly, we have Long Racer 1 and 2. You've got two games here, and both Long Racer 1 and 2 have returned with their classic stories of good and evil, complete with beautiful high-definition visuals, reorchestrated music, and quality of life improvements to the classic gameplay that made these strategy RPGs truly legendary. Long Racer 1 and 2 in collection will be out March 10th, and if you don't know, the first game, the forces of darkness are descending on the kingdom of Baldea. Take up your sword as Prince Leiden and discover the evil that lies in the heart of the Dalsus Empire. And then in Long Racer 2, the forces of darkness once again threaten the realm. Thrust between warring factions, it is up to our hero Elwyn to navigate this war and determine which path will bring peace to this conflict. So nothing too crazy out of this world when you talk about setting a quality Japanese story. And that's going to conclude this video. Again, we only looked at the early portion of 2020. We already know games like Yee's Memories of Salsetta 
will be coming to the PlayStation 4 next year as well. And there are a couple of other titles announced, of course, Tales of Arise. However, we don't have official dates for those games. Yeez 9 might also be coming in 2020 over here in the States. So a lot of quality stuff coming in 2020. That's going to conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.